Good morning. Here we are on Tuesday morning. What exciting days uh, our country is in. And, uh, well, you know, there's some people panicking. And uh, I, I, I've noticed uh, the, the people who are the angriest and the meanest and the ugliest and the bitterest are all from one side of the political spectrum. And, uh, well, you know, it, it's not hard to figure out um, what, what world gets you joy and what world robs you of joy, from robs you of your joy. And um, I was just thinking about today, and uh, I'll talk a little bit in a minute in, in 1 Timothy chapter 2, but I want to springboard into it with a, a quick story of a hymn. The hymn today is uh, more about Jesus and uh, more about Jesus would I know, more of his grace to others show, more of his saving fullness see, more of his love who died for me. And uh, boy, just thinking about that, uh, what a great night we had last night listening to Brother Mrs. Walker teach on marriage and family relationships. It was great. Conflict uh, leading to communication and comfort or becoming a wedge. And it, it was a great time together last night. What a great crowd at church for a Monday night. And uh, that's a great thing. But uh, thinking about this, uh, and, and a great weekend. If you weren't able to be with us Sunday, we had a wonderful time. Uh, Sunday morning and Sunday night. It's very good. But this hymn, more about Jesus. Uh, more about Jesus. Let me learn more of his holy will discern. Spirit of God, my teacher be. Showing the things of Christ to me. Great, great hymn. What I wanted you to notice today um, Eliza Edmonds Hewitt, Eliza Hewitt, um, was an invalid for much of her uh, adult life, and later in life she started getting well, and she was able to actually got very mobile and running around, got busy in ministry, became good friends with Fanny Crosby, um, and sharing in their hymn writing skills. But um, the the story of her writing this song more about Jesus, it came from her crippled body longing just longing to get to know the Lord more and uh, more about Jesus. She just, more than anything else, she wanted to know Christ. And um, but what I want you to, to, what I wanted to point out this morning was this hymn was published in 1887. 1887. Now, that was the era Fanny Crosby was writing. That was the era Charles Spurgeon, pastor of the great church in in uh, London, and that was the time period of Dwight Moody and great revivals going on in America. The 1880s, there was uh, like a, an awakening, and um, it was a wonderful time spiritually. In Europe, Scotland, Wales, um, England, and America, great revivals going on. And, and you know, in each era historically, and I'm not a brilliant historian, but but there gets to be very deep, dark days. And then in mercy, God raises up spiritual leaders. God raised up the same era as when we got Abraham Lincoln. It was 1880, 1860 to 1880. Some wonderful things happened. We, Civil War came along. It was a terrible time. Um, but but um, during that time was great revival. During that time, Satan saw, in my opinion, all that God was doing and so there's all kinds of evil things, wrong things. That's when uh, Jehovah Witnesses came about. That's when the Mormon religion came about. The Baha'is came about in that era. A lot of the cults found their, their beginning during the time of the Great Awakening, the late 1800s. And, um, and uh, boy, if God's beginning to do some great things, the devil's going to be fighting every way he can. And um, that era, when she wrote that hymn, as I was reading about that today, I got thinking about the time period when God raised up some great leaders, some political leaders, some church leaders, raised up hymn writers, raised up evangelists to preach great revival meetings. And, uh, you know, we went from there and down into the roaring 20s, 40 years later, and, uh, and uh, alcohol ran like a river and the Bonnie and Clyde era and the, just a corrupt time in our country. And then what happened? Billy Sunday and um, great revivals in the early part of the 1900s. Some of the greatest evangelists and preachers, uh, Bob Jones Sr. had wonderful, huge meetings, a Methodist circuit writer. And though he 
still baptized babies like the Methodists. Oh, he was a gospel preaching man. And he was ordained at 14, ran his, preaching his first revival when he was 14, 15 years old, started a church, I think by the time he was 16 in his own little community, um, was a very, very well-favored preacher in his teens. And that, that was, so we, we had the 1800s, great revivals, and, and then a dip into moral depravity, and then out uh, came more preaching, and from there we got uh, J. Frank Norris and and um, a, a whole world of great evangelists, and and you know the where I was going in in First Timothy chapter two today. God brings about revival, and I've heard people say that there's just no way that America could see revival. I've heard people say I, I don't see any signs of revival. I don't see, and I think well the only signs of revival I've seen are depravity and, and corruption and immorality and shame. And I think, well, we got plenty of that. We've got the science of revival going right now. Um, I don't know in my lifetime, a time when po the, the uh, evil politicians have been more outspoken and more blatantly bold and, and uh, arrogant in their evil. And uh, what, a, what a time that people are unashamed of their sin. They're unashamed that they don't like America. They don't like the flag. They don't like the constitution. They don't like our laws. They don't like our law enforcement. You know what our nation would be like if there was no law enforcement? Everybody would have to be carrying sticks and guns and whatever because you'd be defending yourself all day long. And whoever the biggest bully is would be the one who would run things because somebody's always got to have, the, there's always got to be rules, whatever you're doing. But we need our law enforcement. And, and I was just thinking, as I have often, Wandering like Esther in the Bible, who was brought into the kingdom in that famous little phrase, for such a time as this. That little girl, teenage girl carried off to Babylon with her uncle, parents killed, siblings killed, city destroyed, churches, schools, everything gone. She finds herself in Babylon, six, eight hundred miles away in another cult culture, another country, and miraculously, as you read the book of Esther, she goes from um, a, literally a, an immigrant, a, a poor, broken immigrant, to the queen. And how that wonderful thing happens. And then she is used of God to deliver the people of Israel from wicked Haman who wanted to destroy all the Jewish people. And the, the stories of God raising up people, they're, they're all over history. They're all over our Bible, but they're all over our, our secular history, just history books. And, and uh, I remember reading my kids the story of Molly Pitcher. Molly was running to get water to her husband as the war is going in the front lines. He was, a, he was a guy that ran the ramrod for the cannon and, and part of a cannon crew. I forget the term. There's a team that ran each cannon. And, um, and she was, but there were so many people dying of thirst and people thirsty, and she'd run and get water, and two or three people would get some water, and she'd be out. She'd get more, and she, she's bringing drink for, like, uh, Rebecca, for all of the, of the uh, servants' cattles, and, um, or uh, his camels, and, and uh, she finally, finally gets water to enough people that she gets to her husband, and he gets hit and dies. And um, the guy in charge called for the artillery to be dropped back because he didn't want the enemy to capture the artillery, and she grabbed the ramrod and said, nobody needs to pull this thing back. I'll take my husband's place. And she rallied this lovely young girl. Um, I'm going to say still a teenager. She could have been in her 20s, but she was young. Grabbed the ramrod. You, you had to dip it in water and ran it down the barrel because if there were any hot embers left from the last firing of the cannon, when they ran, they, they had prepackaged powder wads. They'd slide down there. If there were any embers left, Sliding it down, it'd blow up and kill the guy loading the cannon. She ran a swab down, then you'd put the powder and then the the uh, the cannonball, and then the, you'd ram it down tight, and then you'd light the fuse and shoot the cannon and start all over. Well, Molly Pitcher picked up. See, I've read story after story, famous women, famous men that God raised up at unique times. And, and all of them were not godly, but they were all used by God. And, uh, you know, Patton, I remember... Then uh, my son, my oldest son, I remember getting him the story of, of George Patton, a children's version, so the language was, was fixed up. And what a great story of General Patton. And uh, 
But there again, God raised up a man that we needed. And we needed Eisenhower, and we needed Patton, and, and we needed Montgomery. Uh, we needed these guys that God raised up in a unique way at a unique time to rally our nation. And I, I look at who, who would have guessed uh, our president uh, would have turned out like he did. And uh, when he first started running, that long string of Republican candidates, and many of us would not have picked him first, but we'd sure pick him first today. Isn't that proof that we don't know what's best? Isn't that proof that maybe we ought to step back and say the will of God be done and let's just trust God and let's lean on God? Oh, God knows he's faithful. But I'll tell you, I believe God raised up President Trump for such a time as this. And I think that's why there's such evil running crazy uh, because good, uh, good has come into the land. And, and that's why our churches in California and many other places around the country are being terribly assaulted. And uh, the people attacking the freedom of the churches are all from the same political party. Now you figure it out. And if you want to vote for religious liberty, you need to vote one way. If you need to vote, if you if you think the state should run things, then you vote uh, vote according to that. It's up to you. But know what you're voting for. But I know Hitler and Stalin and Lenin, all those kind of guys, they were all for controlling the schools and controlling the churches and then eventually shutting the churches down. And they were certainly for controlling the guns. And that's that's just how it is. If you can't you can't, those are historical facts. You can't argue with those things. And all those people who are against Israel too, by the way. And we've got a president here who, who stands for so many wonderful things. Now, whatever God wants to do with these elections up to him, I would urge if you haven't vote, be, voted, be sure you vote today. Um, I would go early and uh, you can bring your ballot from home, fill it out, drop it off at a ballot voting place, or you can go vote, <coughs> excuse me, and, um, and um, you know, you can turn, if you bring your ballot from home, you want to actually do one in the ballot place, you can do that. Bring your one from home. That way it's quick and they and they validate signatures and all that stuff. Um, but vote, vote. And, and it doesn't matter to me. It's, it's up to you how you vote. That's what freedom's all about in America. But the, don't ignore you. Don't ignore the opportunity. But I believe that we've got an opportunity. And I look at 1 Timothy chapter 2. And I think God raises up spiritual leaders. Um, first, 1 Timothy, there's first and second. We're in 1 Timothy chapter 2 verse 1. I exhort therefore that first of all, supplication, prayers, intercession, giving of thanks be made for all men. So what are we praying? And those are different one from another, those supplication, prayers, intercession, giving of thanks. Well, let's just say you figured out, um, rather than me taking time here, supplications, prayers, intercession, praying for these people and giving of thanks, being, th we gotta be thankful for these people. Verse two, for kings and all that are in authority, that we may live a quiet and peaceable life in all, uh, in all godliness and honesty. We ought to be praying for our spiritual leaders. Verse 3, I mean, uh, verse 4, who will have all men to be saved? We ought to be praying for our spiritual leaders, I mean, for our, our, our national leaders, that they would get saved, that we would have a peaceful life, and that these guys would get saved. That's our prayer. But look over to Romans. Go back a few pages to Romans chapter 13. Matthew, Mark, Luke, John, Acts, Romans. And in Romans chapter 13, again, um, so in 1 Timothy chapter 2, we read it's our responsibility to pray for our leaders, and I hope you'll pray. Pray for our governor and governors that you might know. Pray for our president and his staff and his cabinet. Oh, we need God. Pray that God would stir revival fires across this nation. And often, like in the case with Lincoln, there is political reform going on while there's religious reform going on. And, uh, oh, pray for our churches and pray for the pastors and the church members that we would get serious about our walk with God, living holy lives, living lives where we read our Bible and pray and seek God's face and turn from our wicked ways. Pray for the people of God and then pray for our leaders. That's a biblical mandate, 1 Timothy 2, that supplication, prayer, intercession, giving of thanks be made for all men, but, it's, but for kings and those that are in authority, praying for God to work. Pray over these elections. But I want you to notice in Romans 13 that every soul be subject to the higher power. For there's no power but of God. The powers that be are ordained of God. See, these authorities, they're ordained of God. Now, if we're a wicked people, God may ordain evil leaders. But if we would seek God's face and humbly beg his mercy, perhaps God would give us righteous leaders. Proverbs says, when the wicked are in authority, the people mourn. 
But when the righteous rule, the people rejoice. And oh, we want righteous leaders. We need godly leaders. Pray for your country. Pray for peace. I hope you'll pray for our law enforcement and for our military, especially uh, especially today, tonight. Um, we've got uh, people in law enforcement. I know they're they're working overtime and, and they're concerned about protecting people's property. Pray. Pray that God would have mercy on our nation. We're a mess. And uh, it's, a, it's a godless world around us. We need the Lord. And uh, we need his word. We need his mercy. We need his help. And so I hope you pray for your country. Pray for your leaders. And uh, ask God's blessing. And uh, take time to pray. Pray for our law enforcement. And ask God's mercy. There's wives sending off uh, husbands. And maybe husbands and children sending their, their wife and mother off in uniform. Um, that could be facing risk tonight. Take time to pray. And take time to care about people. And oh, what a great country we have. What a blessing to be where we are. Pray for God to bring liberty to our churches and liberty to our country. And that God would bless our president. And um, and whoever the president is, um, um, not the new president next to, tomorrow or next week, but in January, the inauguration, pray for the new president, whoever that is. Um, we ought to pray. And we ought to ask God's blessing. I want God to bless richly. I want to see spiritual revival. I want to see an awakening. I want to see people who fall in love with their Bible and fall in love with service. We have got a selfish, self-centered, poor me culture surrounding us. And if anything's not just the way we want it, if it's not palatable, um, boy, we're pouting around and, and we're mad or we're burning down buildings. Ugh, man, we've got a great life. And we ought to be living for others and Christians, but by, by all means, Christians ought to be in church and serving in church and praying for their neighbors and their friends and witnessing and passing out tracts. It's like this Sunday, we had our first back in a rest home for the first time in seven months. And uh, it was a great day. And anyway, I hope you'll pray for your country, pray for the work of God, pray for our leaders and realize that where I started with the hymn, there are times when God raises up he raised up a great president. He raised up great evangelists. He raised up great songwriters and church builders. And there's eras that God's doing great things. Oh, pray that God would raise up some great leaders and great churches in our land. And oh, ask God's blessing on our country and on what's going on around us. I want to see God work among us in a great way. Hope you have a great Tuesday. Don't forget tomorrow night, we'll have church and it'll be an enjoyable time. Look forward to seeing you there. Have a, and, and don't forget the ladies' meeting if you'd like to come tonight. And it'll be an enjoyable time together.